isn't ambrosia like the most amazing dessert? Did you know that you can actually make an ambrosia cake? That's what we're going to be making today. To one beaten egg, we're going to be adding a half cup of whole milk. That's right in there. And then we're going to follow that with a third cup of canola oil or vegetable oil, whatever you have at home. And then, because ambrosia has that awesome orange flavor, we're going to be adding a quarter cup of orange juice concentrate that you've thawed out. That goes right in there as well. And we're going to mix all of that together. And that's it for our wet ingredients. Now let's move over to doing the dry ingredients. The dry ingredients, we're going to start with white all-purpose flour. And we're going to be adding a cup and three quarters. of just regular old all-purpose flour. And then to that, we're going to be adding two tablespoons of white sugar. The orange juice is sweet, but it's not quite sweet enough. One teaspoon, um, one tablespoon, and two tablespoons. This cake is gonna be so good. It's gonna look so pretty. Everybody's going to be so impressed. We're going to add two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Ooh, I have it on the wrong side. There we go. Ooh. And a half. And then we're also going to be adding three quarters of a teaspoon of regular salt. And we're going to kind of make sure that this is all blended together because you don't want to have just a mouthful of baking soda or baking powder. You want to enjoy the ambrosia goodness. And then we're going to add our wet ingredients right on top. That orange juice goodness. We're gonna mix this all together right in the pan. And then to this, we're going to be adding another whole cup of whole milk. And that goes all around as well. Now you may have been asking, isn't it missing one ingredient? Doesn't ambrosia have coconut? Well, just you wait. We're gonna put coconut at the very, very end. This whisk is not being cooperative, so we're gonna switch over to a spatula. Once this has been really well combined, you can actually use this recipe to make muffins. You can probably even thin this out some more, make some ambrosia pancakes.
Now, once this is all combined like that, we're going to be adding, you guessed it, half a bag of sweetened flaked coconut. Put that all over the top. And then that gets mixed in as well. So instead of having a cold ambrosia from the fridge, you can actually cut this into squares and take it with you on a picnic. Doesn't that sound good? Okay. Make sure it's all spread out. So it's kind of the same thickness all over. And once that looks nice and even, there we go. We are going to pop this in a 375 degree oven for 20 minutes. We'll be right back to do a taste test. And look at that, just came out of the oven. It's still piping hot but you can see the coconut bits in it. It looks amazing, it smells so good in here. So we're gonna add some final touches. First thing we're gonna do is add the rest of that flaked sweetened coconut all over the top. And you can make sure that it's all in like an even layer. Make sure your hands are clean. And then, we're going to add some whipped cream. This is starting to look like an ambrosia, isn't it? And then on top of each whipped cream dollop, we're going to be adding maraschino cherries. Now that, this is, this isn't the coconut. That's what makes it an ambrosia, I think. So we're going to be placing cherry on top of each one. Hopefully you won't pick up the whipped cream. This is starting to look so yummy. I can't wait to taste it. Looks like a little cherry coconut sundae. That looks so good. Okay, let's go ahead and take a slice, see what it tastes like. yummy. Let's give it a taste test to see what it's like. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Like a coconut cake. Mmm. Yeah. Those maraschino cherries really add an extra little tasty tasting morsel. The rest of this is going to get donated and I hope that you make this at home. Thanks for watching. Ooh, look at that. Making a nice little corn dish today. Okay. This is for the vegetarians, you know? Vegetarian. Or if you get some, you know, you gotta have a meat dish and then, you know, the, the vegetable dish on the side. So next we're gonna throw in some rotel. I love using Ooh, rotel. Oh, I love rotella. Yeah. It's got diced green chilies and Mm. Look at that, look at that beautiful color. We'll put that in the middle just for fun right now. Yes. Okay, next color we got, we got some jalapenos. Oh lord, that's yeah. spicy. We, we gotta put spice in this one. If there's no meat, we, we gotta put a little bit of spice. Do you oh. agree or disagree? So, I'm putting a lot, 
Yeah, Both just, sides. We're putting a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. I disagree. It's gonna cook down and you won't even taste it. So someone's booty gonna be on yep. fire. That's a and that's a good thing. You know, people need that a little bit. So all right. So we do have to throw in some two percent milk yes. just to kinda so everything was drained, but I do want to put some milk to add some liquid in there. So we just drizzle a little bit like half of a cup. Here we go. You ain't got a measuring cup right now? Mm-mm, not today. <laughs> Making a quick and easy today. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I got the little bit of spices, paprika. 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 I don't even know what paprika tastes like. It just looks good. It tastes like burnt spicy chocolate. There we go. Sure. Oh, this one does taste mm, like something. Paprika salt. Garlic powder. I'm not using garlic salt. Is it it's even? not even a... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing... I'm still using this one, so... Here we go. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna pop it out like that. There we go. That boy. Here we go. I was do... I used the garlic powder because I wanted to use the pink mm. salt. Everybody loves pink salt. It does have extra nutrients. Himalaya Bayas salt? Mm-hmm. Himal... What'd you call it? Himalaya Bayas salt. Himal him oh, that's a little too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do love salt. If you have uh, sodium issues, then, you know, less. Well, like a pepper. What, what is it? Black pepper? Yeah. Ground. Pretty ground. Mmm. 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 We got the Monterey Jack first. Okay, mm -hmm. you got to put cheese. If you're not putting meat, you, there's got to be cheese. We've got to compromise, okay? Not for vegans, for vegetarians. Mm. Look at that. Southwestern Ooh. corn. Gotta mix this one up. Ooh. And this ain't enough cheese, so we're putting the Colby Jack. Colby! Colby Jack. Swish, swish. All right, guys. This, this is a pretty good side dish, you know? Ooh. There's no meat in it. This cheese! Gonna have some steak and Gonna take me to church! Side. Just gotta spread it out real nice. Ooh, hallelujah. You push it down a little bit if you want to get it all mixed in there. Do you all hear that? Put a little, I don't know why I did that, but that was for fun. Okay. So cool, this is about it. We're gonna put this in the oven at 350 for about, so oh, you know what? I forgot the creamiest part we're using. Ooh, hallelujah, glory adios. So I cut this in a little piece. You could just throw the whole thing in there, but we're gonna make it real nice. Semi-nice, nice-ish. Look at that, so it's gonna have a nice creamy bite for everybody. We I mean, all do love that creamy sound. Mm-hmm. I don't know, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, you put, you put cream cheese in any earth. What is this called? Cream cheese. Cream cheese. Oh, okay. Yeah, just throw all of them. Block them in there. We want it creamy. Because when go. it pulls out, it's creamy mm -hmm. too. There we go. Mm -hmm. Great little dish. We're actually donating this dish, so. Uh huh, we're donating it to Sarah. Gonna, her family love it. house just burnt down, and we just want to help them out. There we they're go. in a tragic fire. My goodness. They're going to love this. Yes, they will. 350 for about 30 minutes. We'll be right back. All right, it's all done. Look at that. Mm. Oh, the cream cheese. We gotta mix this up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we gotta mix that baby up. I let it cool for a while because I didn't want to burn my, the roof of my mouth like I usually do. So, whoa, it was perfect. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. That actually tastes like like um, a dip with you some see, chips. Yeah, it does look like a nice little dip. It smells pretty good. I mean, right? Let's it does it. smell good. Let's get that. Ooh, get all those corners. Got to grease the pan like I normally forget. You always forget. This does look like a nice little bit. Yeah, you just add it next to your meat. Be a great little side put dish. Put some on some rice. Some yeah, this is a vegetarian turkey. dish. I'm I'm willing to. I think it's keto too. Is, is it keto? It is keto. Huh? It is also a keto dish. Needs a little bit of protein, so let's let's take a little keto. It's a little spoonful right here. I love corn. Mm. Corn's great. Mmm. It would be a nice dip. Take a little bite of this. Try this bad boy out. That cheese. Mm. Mm. Go for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I bet it's flavorful. It's very flavorful. I love it. Should I hit the. Woo! Woo! Look at that bad boy. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. All under, what, $10 too? Yeah, under $10. Super affordable and all for church. Hey 
Hey guys, I'm back with another quick and easy recipe for you today. Now I'm starting off with some mashed potatoes and these are just some actually some instant mashed potatoes and I did make them loaded. Um, but if you prefer to make you some regular mashed potatoes, if you have potatoes at home, you could go ahead and do that. I'm just trying to get all these potatoes out and get them smoothed over. Some red potatoes would probably be good with this also. But like I said, I just use some regular old instant mashed potatoes. Next to this, I'm going to be adding, excuse me, I'm making a mess, so I'm trying to wipe my hands. Um, next, I'm going to be adding some chicken, which is just some regular chicken. It's like some chicken bites because they're not chicken tenders, they're chicken bites. So I just had kind of heated them up in the oven a little bit so they can kind of get cooked a little bit and then chopped them up. So just, I didn't want to put, put them straight out the freezer into this. And this is just something quick and simple and just absolutely delicious. This is one of my favorites. So next I'm going to be adding some fire roasted corn. This is absolutely delicious. And if you just, if you can't find it, just get you some regular corn, that's fine. I'm using like what I've seen and I know that this is really good. So I'm like, oh, that'll be just so good with the fire roasted corn. So, and I actually had two bags, but it seems like this one bag is actually enough. You know, sometimes you would rather have more than not enough. So I'm just going to try to get this spread out. That looks good already. Now, while you're getting everything together, you can kind of just be getting your oven heated to 350. So that way, when everything is incorporated, you will just kind of be ready to pop this in the oven. And next... I'm going to be adding some gravy. Now, what I used today is I had bought some jalapeno gravy and then just some regular roasted chicken gravy. These gravies are really, really good. That's why this gravy looks so light because it's actually a chicken gravy. But if you prefer, you can use like a jar gravy. Um, shoot, if you wanna make some gravy yourself, go ahead and make you some gravy yourself. Like, but this is a quick and easy meal, so I just didn't wanna be sitting up really making no gravy. But you know, hey, do whatever floats your boat. And like I said, when you're cooking at home, you're cooking with your taste buds and your family taste buds. Some people, like my sister, her husband, he refuses to eat instant gravy, so he's <laughs> not gonna eat it. So she has to make gravy if they're having gravy with something. But shoot, if you know that you can get away with it and just use some instant or use some jar, then go ahead. Cause like we're just doing quick and simple, delicious meals. So we're just trying to, you know, get you in and out of the kitchen so you could just spend time with your family and just chill out after a long day of work. Nobody wants to be coming home and, you know, slaving, making real gravy just for a simple little meal. To this gravy, I did add some minced garlic. Like I said, when you're cooking at home, you can cook however you want to. I just kind of was like, oh, some minced garlic will be really good with this, with the fire roasted corn and oh, just everything. So this is kind of like the KFC chicken bowl. Ugh, it's one of my favorites, so this is gonna be absolutely delicious. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven at like 350, probably for about 20 minutes or so. I will be eyeballing it, but then before I get ready to take it out, I'm gonna add like the Mexican blend cheese. Now you can use whatever cheese you like, cheddar cheese, Havarti, you know, just whatever cheese you like, but this is the cheese that I'll be using today. So, um, once I get this in the oven, like I said, I'll check on it. And then like about 10 minutes before I get ready to take it out, I'll put the cheese on it. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. 
Hey guys, we just pulled this out the oven and this looks absolutely delicious. Oh my goodness, I'm just gonna cut a piece cause this looks so good. Now I did let this sit um, for about 15 minutes or so because the last time I took something out the oven and it was piping hot, it slid all over the place. It was like hot lava. So it was like, no, we're not gonna do this today. But oh my goodness, I'm trying to get this. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And that is just a big old piece. That's just how I like it with my old greedy self. And this is my favorite. Like I said, this is like the KFC bowl. That looks so good and just so simple. It was just some mashed potatoes, but I did make them loaded. Just the mashed potatoes, chicken, corn, gravy, cheese. I took it out about 10 minutes before I was going to take it out and put the cheese. This cheese just looks so good. It just baked up so good. Oh, this is just looks so good. This, I am going to eat some of this today. But the other will be donated. Like I said, we do donate all food that we cook here. So this will be an extra good treat for the people today. So, yes, like it's giving what it's supposed to give. <laughs> I cannot wait to taste this, but yes. So until next time, bye. Right, we're adding our cream of chicken to our crust. We wanna make sure we get everything out of there, just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and spread it evenly through our crust just like so this is gonna be a delicious chicken pot pie all right now that it's all nice and spread we're going to use some style salsa this is the original recipe we use some delicious salsa this is like pico de gallo it's going to be delicious we're gonna put some of that on there just like so and now we're gonna mix it up all again just like this we want to make sure all those flavors combine together just like this look at that it's looking pretty good all right now we're going to use some frozen chicken this is our chicken breast you can use our organic chicken or you can use raw chicken whatever you want but just for the purpose of making this recipe quicker we're going to use some frozen chicken so we're gonna put some chicken on there, just like this. We wanna make sure we layer it out evenly. Just like that. Yeah, that seems about right to me. Now we're gonna give it a little dip. We wanna make sure we have that chicken all under that sauce. Just like that. We wanna make sure everything is evenly placed all the time. All right, everything seems to be good to me. Now we're going to use some frozen corn Let's just open this up you can use frozen corn again you can use whole corn it's just preference but you guys can use anything you like but just for me i'm gonna use everything frozen today so we can make the recipe quick and you guys can have a comprehension of how it's done all right it's looking pretty good all right so now that we have a decent amount of what is it, corn on our pot pot. Now we're gonna mix it up just like that. Is that is a pot pie, is that how you call it? <laughs> yeah, it's a pot pie. A pot pie, yeah, it's huge. You know, I, I have my accent, you know, sometimes I have a hard time speaking English, but I'm doing my best here for you guys. So I hope you guys understand what we're trying to get, but this is gonna be a delicious meal. Everybody is going to love. So now that we have all our corn mixed with our chicken, Mix with our cream of chicken and with our pico de gallo salsa. All right, everything looks, what do you guys think? Looks about even, yeah. Everything you got, you got corn, you got everything nice and spread. All right, next we're going to add our seasonings. This is garlic, this is mine's garlic. I like to buy this guy, this is pretty tasty, but you can do fresh one. This is just less work, you know. We're just trying to make a recipe that requires 
the least amount of effort. You know, when you're busy, you gotta work, you know, you gotta get things done. This is garlic powder for some extra flavor. I love garlic. Whatever you put garlic in, it just makes it taste so much better. There's some ground cumin. Let's add some ground cumin to our recipe. Look at this. Look how beautiful it's turning out. This is a great recipe that everybody is going to love. Man, I already have my stomach is growling because I'm getting hungry just making this. This is so delicious. Now let's add some little bit of salt, you know. You can add a, lot, a tablespoon of salt or, or a pinch of salt. You know, it just, it's all reference, you know. However you want, just taste it. If you don't want to add any salt, that's okay also. Now let's give it a final mix before we put it in our oven. Just like this. Mix it all up, make sure all that salt, all those peppers, that garlic, everything is nice and mixed. Oh my God, I wish you guys could smell this. It just smells incredible. Look at that. Oh, we got some here, you see? That's why you have to make sure you mix it nice. Good look, add the cream of cheese there. You don't want that. You wanna make sure everything is nicely mixed evenly. So all the flavors are evenly spread in our pot pan. All right, here we go. Now let's make it all even, just like so, so it can look pretty. And there you have it. Now I have my oven preheating at 250 degrees and I'm gonna leave it there for about 35 minutes and then we'll come back and check on it. All right, and here we have our chicken and corn pot pie. Now let's cut it up to see how it turned out. Let's cut it this way. Oh, it's nice and soft. It's so juicy. All right, well, we're gonna pick it up so you guys can check it out. Look at this. Look at this deliciousness. Let's put it into our plate. Look at that. Mm. A delicious chicken and corn pot pie. Look at this beauty. Easy to make and very delicious. The whole family will love. Check it out. There you have it. We're making creamy chicken nuggets, ladies and gentlemen. Yummy, yummy. Good kid. It's very kid friendly and it's very tasty. Got the chicken going. Here we go. Just so you know what to buy. Here we go. There's that. Then we're going to have some cheese going on. Cheese, cheese is always friendly. Cheese is good. Cheese is our friend, ladies and gentlemen. Now, for those that don't have, like cheese, I'm sorry, but cheese is my friend. I like cheese a lot, as you can tell. There we have it. We have the cheese. Then here, we're gonna move it around so you can see that everything's getting getting in there nice and lovely. Yummy. We got some, we're putting some minced garlic because you need a little, a little bit of a kick, just, just a little. Something just to make it taste taste a little bit, mwah. Yeah, no, just a little bit, not a lot. Don't need much, cause you don't you don't want to have garlic flavored chicken. Ugh. Not the best thing in the world. Then parsley flakes, just for a little color, and, and and a little health benefits, ladies and gentlemen. Just a little, a little goes a long way, is what I tell my children and my husband. And then we're gonna throw some mixed vegetables in here. That way you get all the vegetables you need, but you don't have to eat a lot of them because they're all mixed in. And you don't have to drain it because it's just going to go into the yummy goodness of the chick of the creamy chicken nuggets. It's a kid-friendly thing because, you know, kids don't like vegetables, especially if they're under the age of 10. They hate vegetables, so vegetables are not their friends. So guess what? This way they get their veggies and you don't have to fuss at them about eating their veggies. They're gonna eat them happily because guess what? They can't see them. Can't, can't complain about what you can't see. That's the way I look at it. You can't complain about what you can't see. And after we're done cooking all of this, uh-oh, it don't wanna open. Hold on. See, this is what happens when you have these difficult cans. They don't wanna be your friend. See, the vegetables don't wanna be used today, obviously. But here you go, ladies and gentlemen, see? We got all the vegetables. Just rope, smooth them around. Make sure that when the, everything gets covered, the vegetables are hidden. 
hidden in plain sight. Ha! Gotta love it. Because the kids, they're gonna love it. Believe me. See? We got cream of chicken. Just for the cream factor. So that way when we put it in the oven, it gets all nice and creamy, delicious. And you don't have to fuss at these kids. Because you know, you know how children are. They, they, they always want to pull things apart because they don't know what it is. This, they gonna see the chicken nuggets. Once they see the chicken nuggets, I can guarantee they're gonna be sold. Just because they're kids. And best people to cook for our children. You don't have to use a lot of seasoning. A little bit of seasoning is always great. But guess what? You still have to season it, I'm sorry to say. You can't just give them, see, cream of mushroom. Now for those of us that may be allergic to mushrooms, an extra can of cream, cream of chicken will be better. But I'm not allergic to mushrooms. Neither are, neither are the people that I cook for, so this is what we're using. Now for you, for those of us that may be allergic, cream of chicken or gay, nacho cheese will work too. Cause you can never have too much cheese. Never ever. Now we're smoothing it around to make sure everything's covered. We're mostly trying to hide the vegetables. That's all. Not the chicken nuggets cause they're gonna come up cause they're gonna get all swollen with goodness. And they're gonna come up, but hey, we wanna hide these vegetables for the kids. Just so we don't have any problems. We want everybody to enjoy their dinner. Okay, now I'm getting ready to use some Miss Dash. For those of us that don't use salt, Mrs. Dash garlic herb, yummy. Best thing ever. A Little bit of seasoning. All right, last but not least, some chopped chives, yummy, yummy. We're gonna make it pretty, just a little bit just to make it pretty so when it cooks it looks all beautiful all right ladies and gentlemen this this is our meal we're gonna call it we're creamy chicken nuggets and vegetables it's a one it's a bestseller i made it for my children guess what they loved it now now when i make it i don't get it to get to taste it i have to taste mine beforehand or i don't get any all right and this is our finished product, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty and delicious, all the way ready for ooey gooey yumminess. We're gonna put it in the oven for 30, for 30 minutes at 350, well, 325, depending on your, 325 to 350, depending on your oven. And then when we come out, it's gonna be ooey gooey yummy. Hope you enjoy it as much as my children do. All right, and we're back. Look at it, isn't it delicious looking? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what it let's see what it tastes like. Oh my my my! Oh, gooey yummy! Like I told you, see, look at the cheese strings. Isn't it beautiful? All right, here we go. That's it. Nice and cheesy, yummy. And hey, we hid those vegetables very well. All right, let's see. Let's see how it looks. Oh yeah, beautiful, delicious. Didn't taste the vegetables, taste nothing but cheese. Gotta love it. 